Arnold <clears throat> wins his own second tournament. Arnold for three Arnold Classics in a row. The three Pete is on. The parlay. Golf tournament, um, the Grand Slam is on. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we are actually running with it because our last week is if we did. Uh, we're not even back to do the results because we think that the results are going to end up being about the same as they were for uh, our Classic US. Um, so there's three, I believe, our Classic UK, our Classic US, and the our Classic South America, which takes place in Brazil. Um, but here is Ilco Productions again. Um, so it could definitely happened, I think, all last night. So we've already seen um, the comparisons. Maybe five or something. These these look like five will close it, but I'm not sure if that's the truth. Um, Hottie, you're I think right. he's looking even better. I was going to say, you're right. Hottie looks great. Yeah, I think he's looking even better. His ways first. I could mean, basically like he looks just lean as he did before, but for some reason his his waist looks way tighter now. Um, yeah, which you'll see in a second. Don't really fast forward. But... Could also be the angle because uh, Yoko's more underneath on this one than he was. Uh, yeah, at the the Arnold Classic US. So like, he got a ring full of. I'm not gonna share a different screen. Let me see if I could share a different screen here. I could just share the there we go. I'll share this. There we go. All right, yeah. So this is this is what I sent South last night. Yeah. Um this... like look at look look at his waist. Like a small small waist and high shooting do not go in the same nice yeah. at all. I like almost never. Mm-hmm. Um he, he's always had kind of a bigger waist. It's just that it's just men's a lot of time they don't have tiny waist, but like he button came in button crazy, dude. Well, just on a straight comparison, that right there, it's the V taper and it absolutely decimates um uh Samson's. Yeah, I think like, Samson looks him from the back. crazy. He lo- yeah, he looks great, but I'm saying just on a waist perspective, it's it's oh, not yeah. even a competition. Yeah, for sure. yeah, his shoulder to waist ratio is decent way there. Samson is also a tall ass dude too. Um yeah, so that is. doesn't really help. Like that's to have like a crazy V tape like a huge thing that's like Tall guys, like when you've been on a lot of size and you're tall, you're going to be one of two things. You're either going to have a really wide waist because you have to hold on to all the size, or you're going to be like a god basically and have the like, <laughs> tiniest fucking waist and the widest shoulders. Like, there's dudes I've seen that, like, like, uh, the supplement store, would be this guy who used to work there, and he was these like, I think I thought to be he's a classic, and he's like six four, six five. He was like 250 pounds, like, like. They're relatively comfortable. Like he's not pushing weight, he's mm. not cutting, nothing like that. Um, and he just look like a god. Like his shoulders were like five feet wide and his waist was like an inch. Like he was <laughs> nuts. Um, so I think that's just kind of Samson, I guess in order to hold on to a lot more size, he has to have a wider waist. But I get it, it's just Samson's midsection, man. I just I just can't do it. I don't know what it is. I just don't I just don't like it personally. It's not any day saying I'm just not the biggest fan of his midsection. Well, look at the, the like, as they're standing next to each other, the size of Samson, Samson's midsection is, like, three quarters of Hottie's whole upper body. <laughs> like, just on a yeah, it is pretty like, big. Like perspective. Yeah. Yeah, he does. And then we didn't, we didn't see that photo. I think I sent it to you. Of, um, I think uh, Hostile Supplement Store said it. Yeah, let me see if I can find it here. Um, Hossal Sutton posted a photo, um, and it really does show, like, the difference between pros and, like, amateurs. Let me see if I can find the careful like, cow on PC named yeah. Corin Abbey. He's sitting down up here. I'm going to send it to you. I think. Let me see. It, it's crazy, right? It, it shows yeah. like a lot of the hostile stuff is a skin, right? And I can have just not <laughs> working. Okay, what the hell is going on? It's crazy. All right. Um, maybe here. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. Oh my God. All right. All right. So this is a great example of um, the difference between damage and pros, right? 
So, yep. like, say it's in data right here, right? Um, it like, it like takes you the phrase to test. You're watching, like, this would help a lot. Like, Samson John is like a really big deal. Like, look, like, great. And he's sitting a couple of feet back from Samson. Don't, don't get me wrong. But, like, his overall physique, too, is just like, like, Samson just on the level. Yep. You know, it, it's just, it's not even close. It's just, it's just how it goes. It's just amateur versus pro. Like, this is why, like, this is the top of the top. Like, Samson's like top five on basically. Like, this is why and what's, these guys stand out. What's crazy about this picture, too, is that in all of this is, you know, branching up more to Sam Sulik stuff, but in Sam Sulik's videos and pictures, he's got a pretty good looking chest. And then you look at this picture and it's like, it's, it's not even close to being I, comparable to anybody there. I, I also know really, this is a good pose for him too. Like this is a great yeah. pose for Samson. This is a bad pose for Sam. You know, like that's why yeah. I'd say like, like the posing that you do, you only want to do what makes you look good. Right. And I don't think Sam would ever do this pose because it just doesn't make yeah. him look good. It widens his waist, it shrinks his chest. Whereas Samson, it's the opposite, you know, it makes his waist look narrower because he's popping out of shoulders. His chest looks full. So, I mean, it could be in skill with posing, you know, um, it could just be that Samson's got more time with posing and, and understands it more and Sam does it. Um, but like, look at the other guys too. Like, um, they, it doesn't really look like that they they do this pose often. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. I mean, not that they go do it often, it's that they don't, like, it's not their best pose. Look, I think that these guys will look better in a different pose, same with, same with this guy over here. Like, they all look better, yeah. but it makes Samson look that much better, you know? Yeah. Like so, that. And then all the all the guys wearing, you know, slim fit, like, joggers, whatever, and then Samson, the, the, <laughs> no, the shorts, the, like, the the Coles uh sweatpants and no, I was sorry, not Sam uh Sam Sulek is in his oh. classic like <laughs> Yeah. Is they're like regular ass sweatpants. That's what I mean. Like everyone something. else is wearing like perfect like taper and perfect like uh like, this is like Jet North, joggers. I think. This is like Jet North. These are like jewelry the pockets. <laughs> and on then the sides. The, the, he's not even hiding the strings either. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's just tie strings. There's <laughs> tie strings. This dude got like baggy, like cargo pants that kind of fit the vibe. Yeah, seems like I'm comfy. I'm just, that's, I'm just that's comfy. Also why, that's also why so many people love him because he's he's just such a normal dude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is that you see that dog that you know, where he's doing transit push down? No. Oh, he's doing transit push down. This dog walks by him. And he's like, I'm going to oh, go for yes. like a few more. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. he goes, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He stops his set, like mid set, <laughs> and he just walks to work. <laughs> and I'm on the same way. The gym I go to has a dog. And anytime we get a chance to fire her, I can't get it. She's so skittish. Yeah. She doesn't come over off. But when she comes over and, and starts to my bag and stuff, I'm like, you, you do me. <laughs> then I say, I, she doesn't do it often, though. But, um, yeah, so this is this is what I was doing earlier. Um, yeah, I just the pros are just on a different level. It just it's crazy to see that. Um, speaking of pros, I did have uh, the seminar last weekend, um, mm -hmm. which was pretty good. Um, gaming was there. Um, as far as like APC, IPB stuff goes, um, has the Carolina uh, promoters there too. People who run Carolina shows. So this is the fourth one. The first one was 45 people, apparently. Um, this is the next one next year. They've already rented out the shut up like conventions there or something like that. So there's wow. really a whole like actual like, auditorium kind of thing. Um, yeah. Next year with this, for the past few years, I've been uh, with some city place in the, um, like with the classrooms and the gym and goals. So um, it's, it's outgrown this point where it's, you know, it doesn't hold everybody. Um, so going to be even bigger next year going hopefully they were saying hopefully get entire mining out if possible um so that'd be kind of cool but yeah we had some big pros there we had um we had on your we had uh the deal we had uh Emmanuel hunter there a few pros and classic as well there's a few i was forget the last good night of home we see um palm Allen was there he's a professional in classic um, I think he's moving up to open though. 
Yeah, so some very, some pretty big um bros there, like a lot of girls actually. My coach is there, he's a pro as well. Um, a lot of female I feel bros. Like this, uh, I feel like it has to be such a like delicate line to cross because you obviously want to go and just like not fanboy, but like these are the best of the best. So you want to you know just go and like be a fan, but then you're also there seminar seminar wise to be like learning. So I feel like it's got to be some like. Like, it, it, you're sitting there with your Sharpie, like, getting ready for someone to sign it, but then you're like, wait, not right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, like, um, I already seen a lot of these guys before and met them before, so it wasn't, like, anything crazy. Like, last year was crazy because that's where all the big pros were there for the first time, so, like, it was crazy, the Andre Ferguson first, because, like, I saw him first in Generation Iron, you know? Yeah. Um, and now I'm seeing him again, you know, like, it's pretty cool. To see them, um, you know, I'm not really, I didn't really ask for, like, uh, any you know, rap or anything like that. Uh, but, uh, it was cool to see, like, you know, that process and all that. The bro was disappointed was the one physique I wanted to see was Ben Kilos. He didn't show it. He wouldn't show it. Uh, I don't know why he just, you know, they were telling me to get up on stage to go, and he say, no, 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 no. Like, he was saying no. So, I'm like, hey, um, because that was one of, he's one of my favorite men's physique competitors, um, is a raw upper body structure, as you're saying. Um, lower body has no legs, which is a damn shame. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. It, it, I didn't learn too, too much. Uh, a lot of what they went over and talked about was kind of already talked about in the past, you know, like, um, you know, what they are looking for in shows and stuff like that. Um, but for me, I asked a couple of questions of the promoters, um, if you were to do the judging and all of that, and, um, I asked about uh, moving from when you're doing your front pose. Um, I say it's just kind of like a joke now that like men's physique guys can't stop moving their arm. Um, and I said, "Is that does that take away from anything?" And they said, "Not." I want to say they said like, "Not really," but if you stand still um, in your last pose, you will only see more restraints. For the more you move, the more chances we see your your weaknesses, right? And that's what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about when you're hitting the front and then you just like reposition your arm? Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and that's one of the things that like uh, um, her name is Mo. She's um, she's a well known like Carolina judge. Um, she judges a lot of the IFU and NPC shows in Carolina. And she used to be a competitor. She's pro as well. Um, and like she's pretty close with my coach. So like you know, I'm trying to work my way in there, play the game, and get the norm up. But she was the one who was talking to a lot of people about like what they're looking for and she was really the one that was like kind of like straight to the point she's like look like the more you move the more weaknesses we, we see she's like our job is to find the weaknesses that's how we determine who's placing where so if you're going to show me weaknesses then i'm going to see that um then you should talk about it with many guys and all that um and for guys like they really emphasize like when you're doing when you're doing um uh comparisons this is what was interesting to me she said they're like when you do the comparisons don't do any sort of transitions they're like just go from front to back to front you yeah. know like don't don't do anything flashy they're like because we're we just want you to show your front and show your back they're like if you do transitions and you're taking longer and all that then it's going to stand out and you're going to like it um and one of the pros was talking about like when you're here they like, show the front pose he's like this is how you get to that pose he's like two times and he's like, the sooner you get back, you get to the back pose, the better, right? He's like, you you want to get as fast as possible there, so you will be the first one that they're looking at uh, while everybody else is still moving. Um, so a lot of the work things that they really emphasize, and a lot a lot of the pros, which has been true for me lately, like this has been a lot on my mind lately. But a lot of the pros, something they really like kept emphasizing was trust the process. So like seriously, like, like so many of them were like trust the process. That's the biggest thing. And that's so hard. It's been hard for me lately just because, you know, putting on some fat, I've leveled off weight wise, which is good, but putting on fat and stuff like that, um, you know, trusting the process. And now I'm starting to see some progress again, um, which is great to see, you know. Um, so you got to trust it and, and know that it's it's all for a reason. And even though it not, you might not be the happiest for a month, you know, you're definitely going to be glad you did what we did in the long term, you know. So that's something you're all on to. I'm with you there. I think I texted you, what, like, a couple weeks ago, and I was like, 
sad sad hours abs no longer around <laughs> yeah it well, sucks it sucks losing your ab you know because like especially when you get used to them um i got used to them for for frat and you know just losing them over time just sucks so bad i mean it felt like it's not the truth but it felt like a week after my my last show i lost all my names like all our all the practice effort that i put in you know that's what it felt like it's not true you know looking back i would love to have the physique i had a week after my show but it's like <laughs> the physique that i had when i visited up in august um right after a show i would have loved to have that you know all six apps showing super vascular you know i was i was pretty good there and like even though i had a bunch of food in my system like i was still pretty i was still really lean so i just you know it's it's gonna be hot you know you kind of like you 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 see all the weaknesses so i only ever saw what was wrong not what was right yeah and that's that fire trust of the bosses that like you know i may not see you as much abs right now but and i go back a couple of weeks i bet you less abs are showing than they are now um and like you might tell it's like you can tell my delts alone in my back my back my back and my delts have definitely improved in the past couple of weeks alone like just getting you know getting them more tone you know pulled in and uh some fat on you know so it's good to see all that um over time just try to trust it though because sometimes it, it may seem like counterintuitive what you're doing you might it might seem like all over unfat and losing strength but what's going on but it's for a reason you know um and it's you gotta like i said you gotta trust the process and the other thing i learned too was when it comes to posing um especially men's physique and like with with classic and men's open it's, it's a bit more strict when it comes to um like comparisons um just because they want to see everyone doing the exact same thing but when it comes to men's physique it's all about like being like as like like we've talked about it before like as aesthetic as possible it's all about like kind of like best ideal on you right and uh when i was getting critiqued on my posing i was pretty much good for the most part just a couple of things here and there but the thing i was learning was that like each guy who critiqued me changed my physique like my uh hose you know like some of them would say oh put your fo uh, foot more forward put your foot more back some would say you know um angular shoulders work forward some would say angular shoulders with your waist like it's like each one's a little different so it's kind of like all right it's kind of off for interpretation like it's up to like each was a little like because each was a little different you got to take them all with a grain of salt you know you need to um like keep that in mind that each physique is different and each posing is different so just because you may be posing slightly different than somebody else it doesn't mean that you're posing wrong it just means that your pose is slightly different you know so that's like the side of mind. that's like the the truest example of why bodybuilding is subjective because you have i mean if you look at like men's physique i can't really you know dive as deep into because it's just two poses maybe three if you count the transition but like you go classic like just on a front double i bet like looking at uh the panel where they're not the panel but where they're all up there they're all going to be hitting it in a different way in terms of weight placement arm height like obviously you want the the parallel angle um but for the most part they're all going to be doing it in their own way and that's just for one pose like you hit all the other poses, and they're all going to be doing it in their own way. So it's just, however, you can emphasize your own best points with. So you're right. Like if the person says, "Put your front foot forward," maybe it's like to just get a little bit more of a turn, like in your waist, so then you can angle a little bit better. Like it always has to be just to emphasize your strong points. Yeah, and then sometimes I would say, like I would see like guys critiquing you a little bit differently too. So it's like, and look at my back, my back was. It's a lot different now, actually. I did learn a lot with my back. The biggest thing was I was having my arms reaching out like upwards like this. So um, you know, angling more downwards, I, I do see a difference then my back does look wider. My waist looks looks narrower with my new back pose. Um but ultimately it was like my front pose is pretty much fine where it was. Uh there's not really much else to critique. Oh to be with Dia, that was the other person. Uh I'll try to think of Terry when Dia was there. Uh, that's pretty cool to see Jeremy, uh, just because he's been around for so long in this seat. Um, he's been around longer than Andre Ferguson has. Um, Jeremy, I think he's been he's there been... since the beginning. 
When Vita's thing is always wearing that uh, bandana, isn't it? Or not the game with a bandana? Maybe, maybe when he's training. I'm not. Yeah, that, well, have... that's one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you do well in the day for the seminar, but I think you wear kind of like a hair band thing to be trained, I think. Uh, or like a bandana. Um, but yeah, he's been there since like the very beginning, I think, of like the Olympia of men's physique, I'm pretty sure. Um, yep. Yeah, he's been around for a while. He he has brought a lot of light to men's physique over time. You know, his um, library has, you know, gone up, gone down, not gone down, but. Um, he's back at it now, back competing and all that. So it was kind of cool to see see him there and he had a big presence there. You know, he had a great relationship. It seemed with a lot of people, um, you know, a lot of the promoters and stuff like that. They all kind of knew who he was. Um, so it was interesting to see that. Uh, you know that that relationship. It's a game, you know, by realizing game, the you play and uh. There's there's certain things that you know there's a lot of nuance. There's a lot a lot of nuance of bodybuilding, and one of the things about bodybuilding nuance is, uh, the the better you know the judges and stuff like that, the better chance of, uh, placing well at shows, and the better chance of uh getting good critiques that will help you. So you got to build those That's relationships. What I was yeah, yeah, you like, build the relationships and. and they gotta know who you are, and that will actually subconsciously put them, put you in a better light on stage than other people. Yeah, it's like if you take away the scoring and you take away like going for competitions and shows and all of that. Like, if you do it st- like solely from a point, like a standpoint of how can I improve as like with my physique, they're gonna give you the best feedback. Like, it's just like. If you and I are in the gym together, you and I have known each other for a long, long time, so we're able to comfortably give each other potentially uncomfortable feedback, whereas if I have someone brand new in the gym and let's say like I'm, we're past unsolicited advice level, like you maybe like have had a conversation or two, I'm not as willing to have an uncomfortable conversation saying like, this is a weak spot for you. Like that can be hard to say, like especially people in the gym because we're like so focused on improving constantly that if someone says this is a weak point and that wasn't something you considered a weak point, that can be like really tough to hear. But that's why, you know, like you said, having that relationship with especially pro level judges, um, that's I mean, that's a <laughs> a bridge you gotta cross every single time. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, they, if you email the judges afterwards, they'll still tell you, like, what to work on. But, you know, knowing them, you know, they, some of them might, you know, be able to tell you how you're looking, you know, before a show or whatever. Um, not that, that like, that achieved much. That's the thing. It's not like, um, it's not like you're handing someone, like, the other team's playbook, right? You're not, like, handing them, like, literal cheats. You can't just, like, change your physique in a week. But if somebody's like, you know, you ask the judge, uh, oh, we get advanced or something, if you know them enough, like, hey, how am I looking? I'm sure that they'd be like, well, you got to really tighten up this, or, you know, you, in your next off season, you need to grow this, stuff like that. Um, you know, they'll give you, it's not going to change the results, really. It's all going to be a forward the best block of that day. So even if you look amazing a week out, you know, you might look like shit the day of, and they might place you far back. Um, but getting the, Getting the critique afterwards, um, you know, they said my back was a big focus. Uh, after my last show, they said, you know, with the thickness in my back it needs to come out. Um, and then also my upper chest, which is surprising. I thought my upper chest was one of my uh, strengths. But it's yeah. you know, supposedly to them on my weaknesses. I thought my weaknesses were my arms, but they didn't say anything about my arms. So um, that's what I'm going to be working on now is my loose split is the very rough. And it's, um, you go to the back, arms, so back to stay wall, and arms is A2, but I do touch up my upper chest at A2. Um, so I do like one or two movements in the upper chest. D3 is legs, and then rest. Now, day four is back. Day five is chest and buys. And then day six of training is, um, is I hit everything just out twice a week. Um, Besides like splay to the only thing I don't really hit twice a week, but everything else I hit pretty much twice a week. Um, yep. 
to work on those uh, weaknesses that the judges are saying, right? So, um, got to improve upon that. I've already got a confidence about that, which is good. I have a new bat routine that is a lot more like uh, it's all pull down and, and rows, really. Yeah. You were saying that in your Snapchat, just all, like three different rows, three different pull downs. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I just went at it like with a very like optimized approach and like really like isolating um, mm. individual muscles and uh, rather than like doing anything sort of like heavy compound movements, I'm just doing stuff that's like really good, like semi compound or isolate. Um, and just like really squeezing the hell out of everything. Uh, and just getting like, and like also just kind of like keeping it pretty intense too. Like I warm up now with like probably like two to three, four G rep sets, and then the rest is just like eight to 12, maybe six to 12, like to, to like close to failure pretty much. So, now, do you, uh, like, let's say you do three different rows, right? Are you doing any single arm movements? Or are you doing all uh, two arm together? Yeah, so I do, I do close grip pull downs. Then I go into single arm rows and give them a shoot. Then I go to T bar rows. Love those. So like a wide grip. Yeah, single arm and great arm cables. Um, then I go to T bar rows, a lot of T bar rows. And then I go to, um, lap pull downs and then I do pullovers on machine. We got a puller machine on my gym. So that's that's my routine. Um so I do a lot of cable and a lot of machine. It's all it's all cables or machinery. It's all some sort of machinery really. Um but I keep everything the same like in grip wise except for the single arm the single arm around the other kind of they're set is separate they're separate. Um but I do, I take those nice and slow. I, so like the start of the rep, my hand is flat with the pair, with the, or parallel with the ground. And then when I end, it's perpendicular for it. So I, when I row, mm-hmm. I turn my hand to the side, um, like twist it right. Uh, like to like, so I'm going to start here and then I end up here. Row on the yeah. end, it gets a good squeeze in my outer lap. And then everything else, it is, you know, best of either, or squeeze where I was eating, you know, middle of my back for, for close grip pull downs. Um, Outside, like terrace beach of minor, outer lats, lower lats for 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 wide lat pull downs. Um, my rows, I kind of just use my whole back really. I try just to get as much of uh, my lats in general as possible. And then my pullers is like is like thickness a little bit. Chunk to thickness is really good. It's coming from the close for pull down the CR rows, and then width is coming from like the pullovers, the CR rows, and the uh wide grip fold. So yeah. You can get this too with uh figure what thing is. If I have any energy I'll do some abs, but that's twice a week now. I do that once every four days per back day. Yep. Which is nice to feel. Or once every five days. What would you do four or five? Once every five days. Um so what is twice a week. One of the things I learned for single arm rows is especially on the table like you talk about you know going your grip changing as you come in and then right at the very like peak of that movement just rolling your shoulder a little bit back and like twisting your whole upper frame a little bit just to get a little bit more squeeze that was one thing that my coach worked with me when i was went back when i was working with him it was like instead of ending right there which is where the natural ending of that movement is mm-hmm. it's just rotating a little bit more on it to get that little bit just a little bit more squeeze in your middle back. Yeah, and that's also why um that's also why like Arnold like when using his rows and what's wrong a lot of people do is they like fall forward towards the machine and then use one of it to yeah. pull it back. And that's not what he's doing. He's leaning forward, he stretched out his back and then as he's hitting it back, he's pushing it back with his like he's you know, getting back into the posture. At the same time, he's rowing. So his back is rowing from the start of the cable machine to the very end of the rep. Um, so he's not using any momentum. Even though he's going fast, you know, he's still doing a full row from start to finish. He was pulling the whole time. You just get a lot more range of motion. Um, and that's the kind of similar similar aspect where you just pivot it a little bit and get up to like traces of uh, range of motion. Uh, it also depends on what you're doing. You can close grip, you can't do that. You can't twist, but yeah. it's the single arm, yeah, for sure. Um, I did see, you see, um, I don't know if, I don't think Mary has one, but you ever seen that uh, row machine that's got the plates to the bottom 
and it's got like two attachments for hands on each side. They're like this, and then like this. You know, yep. tighten up. Yep. I saw somebody say that that was a light press of, of that uh, rose or something like that. And I'm like, holy shit, is that fucking trailing? Probably hitting that all like four or five plays per side. I'm like, no, I'm strong. Wait a minute. <laughs> this, ain't, this ain't real. Yeah, my thing whenever I do any row movement that's not cable or dumbbell, like if I'm doing anything, any machine work, I'm not really focused on like like mentally thinking like if I'm moving this weight, I'm strong. Like that's no longer a thought process. I'm now thinking like I need this weight to get the best feeling possible because it it's just the reality. Like I can row you're right on one of those one of the machines that is kind of like that where it's plate loaded i think close i mean i think three plates is my top working set and then if you translate that over to dumbbells i'm going over what 45 45 45 that's buck 25 going over and trying to grab a 125 <laughs> dumbbell i'm like how i can't move this <laughs> yeah it doesn't translate it's like in like grusters and squats i think i think like press like right now, my top sends like a nice and slow left eight place. There's no shot we can like an ever back like press up bus. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like he's like you give you could like press so much more than you can squat. It's like mm -hmm. I would say it's probably like double. You could probably like press double what your squat is easily. As yeah. far as like sheer weight goes, but with the resistance of the machine is like that is not it's not quite the same. That's how that raw machine works. It's like. The, the way the physics works on the place where the actual like plates are in comparison to the fulcrum, it's very light. You know, it's it's, it's very light where you're wrong. That's where you have to use them in place. But then if you use like, um, like that's why the, they, the Arsenal T bar row, um, if you guys have ever used that, the Arsenal T bar row, that's why it's called the Hunglers because the grip is so the way the physics works, right? Is T bar row, it's typically the machine pole that actually holds the plates is really long right and on top of that your your grip is usually pretty close to the plate so like pretty much right out where the plate sit so you can usually even do a few plates but on the arsenal handler what they do is they set it up where like the pole itself is really short and where your grip is is almost like two-thirds of the way down the pole not really even that close to where the plates get onto the machine so it's a lot, lot heavier because you're using a lot more. Like you have to fight gravity a lot harder. And there's a lot more resistance in the actual, like, physics in the machine. So um, resistance in the physics. Um, so it's you have to use a lot less weight. Like I maxed out like a plate and a five, a plate and a ten, something like that on each side. Where on the G-bar row, I can get like three to quarter for good length. Like, so like they work between six and eight. I think my energy, right? It's it's like it's wild the, the difference in weight. Um, so you better keep that in mind too. Like the high machinery is very different in weight. I don't mean you see yeah. and you end up like uh hugging with yourself, you know. <laughs> That's why that machine's called the light press. Yep. <laughs> but the only thing that I wanted to touch on too today was uh actually in your regards to trying to master that was um, I was listening to a video of uh, RP Strength, and I think it was um, Jeff and Nipper when they were talking about different training styles. So then it really like reminded me that just because it, but there's a training style that worked for a pro at a certain time, doesn't mean that it's true now. And one of the people that they were talking about was was my mentor and. We're talking about like what he his philosophy was and like the science and studies that they've done since Mike Lynch has been even alive has really disproven basically every single thing he said. Um, you know, he's talking about like working out, you know, four times a week, no more than an hour. We do like one true light to failure set, warning set and failure set for each movement. And you just do like like how light it is. It it doesn't fucking check out, right? Like it doesn't. That the the science is there. The science doesn't. It disproves that. It says that this is very very inefficient. <laughs> so I also like every time you and I talk about this, I always think to myself, I'm like, 
there's no way this is what he was doing. Like we talked about like routines that work for pros that, you know, might not work for other people. Like yeah. for example, like the Arnold, you know, where you do like opposing muscle chest like that's it works for some people, it's not gonna work for everybody. But yeah, for Mike's Mike Mentor's thing, three days the the, the the video I always see is if you're working out more than three days for twenty minutes in that workout, you're just not up and uh, and then he goes it's like the, the early versions of Coach Greg. But it's it, it it baffles me because there's no way you get Olympia ready and Olympia arguably winning physique because that one where he and Arnold were up there, I definitely think Mike Menzer should have had it, but um, there's no way you get to that level working out that little. Like, yeah. yes, overtraining is a problem, but you got to be in there for more than, like, if you look at your total hours on the week, at, like, three hours has to be, like, a minimum. You can't get below that. <laughs> yeah. And three hours is also, like, consider you're going, you're relatively hard, like, you're not wasting yeah. your time in there. Um, you know, yeah, like, like yesterday, my, my training session ended up being about an hour and 10 minutes. A lot of that was because I was texting a lot. So, <laughs> uh, I used every reason one time, but, uh, yeah, it just, it just doesn't, it just does not check out. Um, granted, also, Mike was also on meth and shit. So, kind of got to take what gets to the great assault, right? But, um, it just, the, the science is just show. And, and what's crazy now, too, is that there are, there are studies done. Newer studies were asked not too long, a few years really. And what is shown is that um, not training for more than really like an hour is ideal, right? Like, you know, you shouldn't be in the gym for more than like weight training. We should be in the gym for more than an hour. Yeah. It's kind of like the sweet spot. Yeah, I would say like for me, like 45 to an hour, depending on the day, um, is, is about right. Like my. Like my back day, for instance, might take me like 45 to 50 minutes or so if I'm not like wasting any time. But it's also extremely tired. Where my belt, they has to be emailed an hour and 10 minutes and I did way more sets of rest. It wasn't as tired because your nails are a lot smaller than your back is, right? So it's like your back takes a lot more exertion and it takes a lot more of your energy to do it. You're, you're crying your nervous system during back and leg days. That's why it's so tiring. Um, but like what the science is showing is like no more than an hour really. And then you men, if you're like on the advanced side, like you're a bodybuilder, um, you know, you know what you're doing, you, you put you use the gym. Going to failure is actually not that just learn more. This is what the studies show. The studies show that going to true mechanical failure is only really beneficial for beginners or like into the gym. If you're bodybuilding, what the studies have shown is that you actually gain more by having a, a couple reps left in the tank rather than going to true true failure um so that's if you shouldn't see because bodybuilders have always been like it's always about uh you know going to failure going to mechanical failure just pushing it as hard as you possibly can right and the studies are showing now that that's not the case and really where you gain the most also has also been shown in the negative now like these studies are showing that it doesn't matter the speed you do with the positive, what matters is that you're counting at anywhere between two and seven seconds on the negative, and you'll have the yeah. same results. But it's a slow negative that matters. That's where your body builds. Right, you got your carrying muscles, and you 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 gain hypertrophy. Right, so like that's what these studies are showing. When you lean here to see, it, it, it's going against what a lot of people have to say. And on top of all of this, right, on top of all of this, it's actually showing that like. Six to ten reps, or like eight to twelve reps, is like the ideal rep range for for muscle building. Anything more or less has been shown to have diminishing returns. The further away you get from that rep range, um, this is also we're also talking about. I'm talking about like muscle building solely. I'm not talking about like cuts or anything like that. You know, you're not cutting out and prep. This is like a girl's phase or a man's phase or something like that. Um, that's what the study is shown. So really, you should be doing like a couple warm up sets. A couple of easy working sets per movement. Um, and then moving on to your next thing. And doing that for no more than four or five minutes an hour. And that'll be like your best workout. And great, it does matter what you're doing, like what you're hitting and, and how you're hitting it, stuff like that. But like the reaction sets, that's what the statistics show. That's new, which is interesting. See, I really like that 
you know, the six, you said six to 12 is kind of like the, the ideal, you know, rep range. And I wrote two plans recently for, for a couple of people, not bodybuilding plans, but like people who hit me up, like, Hey, I want muscle and like muscle improvement plans. Um, don't talk to me about diet, even though that's what I was going to immediately lead with. Like, what's your diet look like? But mm-hmm. just from the, the workout plan, I love four sets, like, cause I, I just, I love a four set, uh, like per movement type thing. Um, and I always write on my start, you know, the warm up set is relatively low weight, but it's 15. And then I just go right into 12, eight, six, like, and that's just consistent throughout the board, like across the board. And I just, it, for me, like anecdotally, I find much better results when I go on that scale as well. 12, eight, six, except for, you know, there's some movements that I go heavy volume or maybe just a couple, um, reps instead of that but for general means the the 12 8 6 is really what i've seen that works so i I think it's you know cool to see that the science is now backing you know the anecdotal data yeah i mean it's for me it's like i do like 12 10 8 i try not to go below 8 uh i think that sometimes going below 8 you're going a little bit too intense um with the with the movements but it's also like a lot of this too it isn't what the science is showing you do need to adjust it depending on what your body is on to. Like, like Ronnie was, Ronnie Coleman was very much like lower reps, you know, six, maybe eight, very high intensity. But then you got like Jay Cutler, who was training for like three hours every day from like midnight to like 3 a.m. and was just doing crazy high volume the whole fucking time. And then you also got Kai Green for him, supposedly, this is what he says, is that all of his training was three sets of 20, right? Like, it's that's what it was always for him. It was really three sets of 20. And then Jay was the three sets, three sets of 10. That's what it was for Jay. Everything was three sets of 10. It was all straight sets. Everything was straight sets. So it, it, it all depends on, on what you're doing and what what your body gets the most results from. And I think that my body gets the best results from not straight high volume, but, like, I think like a lot of sets, but also this like a couple warm up sets and then a few working sets eight ten twelve or seven twelve twelve ten eight and a pretty close to failure is what i noticed and like my doubts yes they were popping or something like that and but, also i did i did four side belt movements and one front and one rear belt movement um because i need to work on my side delts but i was if you think about it, your front belts are working pretty hard on chest days, and your rear delts are working pretty hard on back days. So you're already hitting those. The only time you ever hit side delts is when you're hitting side delts. Right? Yeah. So, I was like, you know, you part of it this direction, where I hit what needs to be hit, because it doesn't get hit often, and then I just touch up the stuff that gets hit pretty often. You know? So that's why I, I brought it to be with with and with a pop, and my delts are looking solid compared to usual. So you won, uh, when people ask me about the, the bodybuilding versus, you know, regular weight training or even like compared to like powerlifting or anything like that. Um, uh, I know if it was, I'm pretty sure it was you wait like years ago that, that gave me this saying, but it was like bodybuilding is trying to move the least amount of weight, for the most amount of reps and range of motion. And like, I try and carry that mindset to almost every piece three sets of 20 just across i think is crazy but i think that generally speaking i mean well actually we talk about we almost never pr and that's kind of like a big big mindset like you're we are never going for that that one set or one rep max so shifting that mindset from a lot of people can be tough too yeah especially when you're younger you know the strength is a big uh ego thing but the quote was, mm. um, it's, I think it's like, Detroit, uh, all you builders train or how they train or whatever is, uh, you want to move the least amount of weight as far as possible. And then power let the train where they want to move the most amount of weight as, least, as easy as possible. Cause mm. you never saw us train. I actually said that exact quote yesterday to Nick, um, because you're arguing about how I think that about 10 of power lifters are training wrong, frankly, because the human body is not meant for strength. We're not meant for strength. We're, we're meant 
were actually meant to run our driveway. We're the longest runners in the animal kingdom, believe it or not. Uh, those of us who believe it or not, it's true. We run all day long. And that's if, you know, we're going back to the lake. Yeah, yeah, like we're going back to the lake, living off the land and like, you know, yeah. barely having fire and shit. Like, you're running all the time to catch your food, right? So we were runners, you know, when it was fire flight, we fucking pulled it, dude. We didn't fight. So, um, we were all dead. So when you think about that and you think about like how do we get injured, uh, and why, how do we get all the time? Technically, you can make the argument that powerlifting is the wrong way to train because, you know, powerlifters get injured all the time. It's part of the gig, you know, it's part of what they do. They tear muscles, you know, they, they, they tear jo- uh, ligaments, they tear, um, you know, uh, tendon stuff like that because they're lifting and pushing too hard to the core where their body just kind of gives out. That muscle just gives out. Um, but body runs is not the same, you know, very seldom, not often, that a bodybuilder tears a muscle or a ligament or tendon or something like that. Only when he does something, you're not normally doing right. Like if you're, if I were to play football at like in the middle of crack. I probably would mm. hurt me yeah. error, probably because I'm yeah. ready for an energy or sorry, an energy injury. Ready for an injury, you know, my body, I'm, I'm very low calorie, you know, I'm very like lower energy. So, like, getting hit would probably just do a lot of damage, right? So, like, that's where you get, get injured. So, yeah, it's because of bodybuilding, but it's also like you're doing something your body's not trained to do. Um, but there is a video recently, it was, uh, I think it was like, elephants or something, and it was like, they like, or I don't know what it was. So it's just your animal, and they're running, and they're like, Lord, I mean, we've been running all day. I really hope we outran them. I hope they're gone now. And then they, like, turn back and look at where they just were running from, and you just see four humans with, with spears. It's like silhouettes yeah. up on this hill. And they're like, yeah. these guys never stop. And that's literally how it was. <laughs> like, that's literally how we were. We were the longest runners. We could outrun anything. So if anything tried to run from us, we might not be as fast. Well, we can eventually catch up. You know, we're, we're more like hyenas than we are she is. You know, we're here for the marathon. We're not, we're not spurgers, right? So, yeah. um, you got to say, you can take power to she, where, like, bodybuilding, you need to train to build muscles. You're tearing the muscles and you're displaying your muscles. Um, so you take it with a, with a marathon road. You should be very difficult to train like that. Your body, you need to, you literally are telling your body, we need to adapt to this to do this better and easier next time. So I need you, I'm going to tear this muscle, you repair it so that it's easier next time. Or counterbalancing mm-hmm. is like, we're going to train strength so that way I can lift this weight that as little energy is needed and as little shirt is needed for my body weight right now. So you're telling your body, I don't want you to gain any muscle. I don't want you to gain any fat. We say exactly the way I am. But I want my muscle cells to be Denser, only to be harder yeah. and denser, so that I can insert more uh, less energy to lift this weight. That's how it is. So, um, you know, that's why like professional athletes hire bodybuilding coaches to train them. They don't hire powerlifting coaches. You know, powerlifting is just powerlifting. There's no other application for powerlifting. Um, bodybuilding is you can apply it to a lot of different things. So, in training, is to apply it to everything, right? Like, and it's just how it is. You know, it's I'm not saying bodybuilding is better than powerlifting. I'm just saying this is this is what the body is more built for than you know the other. So that's also something you yeah. don't mind. Yeah, and it's like the the subjective conversation because we bring this argument to any power lifter and they're going to, you know, dispute it. Like it's all it's all subjective. Like it's all based on our own opinion. And but, that's why these conversations can be so tough. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like look at how often power lifters are injured though. That's like that's like my argument. Yeah. It's like they're injured all the fucking time. You know, there's like you like look at um look at West Side Farbell. West Side Farbell is yes, it's the extreme side of our lifting and none of it's fucking healthy. But like look at the guys talking about their injuries. You know, you can you can look up interviews with guys from West Side Farbell talking about their injuries and they've torn like everything twice. Like it's crazy. <laughs> and like that's not normal. You're you should not be tearing muscle. If you're tearing muscle, you did something very wrong. You really fucked yeah. up. Wow. Um, like uh like an England match uh tear with um Larry Wheels. You know the guy who was actually um, I was yeah. gonna bring up Larry Wheels because Larry Wheels is the combination of bodybuilding and powerlifting and he either gets injured more times than everybody else or 
he injures other people. Like there's the Larry yeah. Reels curse. For, and like that is like so scary. Yeah. I would never train with Larry Reels for that very reason because he pushed my body in the way that nobody's not used to. And we'd be going for strength and shit, and I'm just pointing to his homie. And that's what happens to a lot of guys who turn around. But he's a fucking alien, dude. Like, he, he's not even out yeah. of the planet. You know, like, you can't, like, Larry Wills is such an outlier. You just, like, you can't even, that's why he's so crazy. Like, that's why it's crazy to see what he's lifting, because it just, it's crazy. He looks like a flying over there almost. And, tr- like, is as strong or stronger than 99.9% of competitive power lifters. Well, yeah. It's wild. Well, did you, did you see the, uh, the arm wrestling one with him? That was the worst one that I've ever, injury that I've ever seen. He injured um, a dude's no. arm. He he snapped he snapped the dude's arm. I've seen I've seen those you do before. You it's after your elbow yeah. or whatever. It's like I think it's like yeah. where, where it's there. It's the you tear the ligament on the inner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's on it's closer to your shoulder though. It's on the shoulder side that gets torn. That's why I'll never arm yeah. wrestle. Like I've always said, like <laughs> I will never arm wrestle just strictly out of fear of that because you're down for the count for months if you do that. Um, it's closer to a year, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't, I just assume at least like four or six months for recovery or something like that. Because then it's yeah. just world back. You have to get surgery and you have to like do PT and stuff like that. Um, like my mom's ACL, she tore her knee. It took six months and crutches before she could like wear a brace. And then it was like, I think it looked another six months with the brace, you know, and then it was like slowly wearing the brace less and less. Um, you know. And so like, that's why I'll never arm wrestle. I was just out of the just sheer fear of it. Um, but the reason that guy tore his heck doing nine like, braces is you way too slow. He's doing way too slow, way too heavy or out of weight, and his chest just gave out. He's pushing way too hard. Um yeah. so he's doing something that he normally doesn't do and something he should have been doing. You know, and that's why you get a muscle tear. Uh well, that's why you should be really too slow. You should not go so slow that your muscle just get out and tear. You know, you shouldn't be doing a rep for more than, like I said, like seven, seven seconds is like where it starts to dip off or get your results. So anything more than that, it's kind of diminishing returns. And at the same time, you're also asking for an injury as well. So at least I'm going to say from like a, from like a mental standpoint to it, like, sure. If you're trying to like PR bench and you're struggling and it takes more than that, that's different. But if you're doing any movement and you genuinely take longer than, I mean, for me, I'd say five seconds, seven seconds is where you're talking about. But like, if you're taking more than that amount of time, like, what even is your thought process? Like, you get, you, I would be bored doing a rep that slow. Like, if I do five, five, seven, six, seven seconds, like, that's intentional. But doing anything more than, like, imagine doing a, like a, barbell curl and you bring it down for 15 seconds like i would just be looking around like what are we doing here yeah yeah they got it for like 10 reps then we're talking like a two and a half minute yeah. set <laughs> you'd be there forever hey bro are you done with this uh are you still hitting this i'm i'm still in a rep <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're slowly going down hey man <laughs> whoa what was it was it now already the control with this the the turtle uh so- Turtle in the hair. Yeah, yeah, that analogy. What was it? Um, patience. I forget what the yeah, slow man is. Um, slow saving is the race. There is slow yeah. saving is the way to manage. Slow saving is the race. You do like <laughs> definitely do like five hours every year. She just actually like do it because it's so long. Kind of attention. It is like <laughs> you're having like a full on conversation while you're doing it. Yeah, man. So uh, I, I think I'm gonna go uh, to Chipotle. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, so he's like, I'm gonna set you guys. Like, I got three sets there. I'm gonna wait. Maybe one set. <laughs> oh, there's yeah, somebody. Get your job going on. <laughs> Makes eye contact the whole time. One one hundred. <laughs> one out of hundred. <laughs> Two out of hundred. I want to see it. Cool. <laughs> Fuck that. But yeah, no, it's, I can you, imagine too, like, like take that in like a like a PF setting where there's no benches when there's only three Smith machines, and you're like, all right, this guy's been on there for like ten minutes. He's bound to be finishing up. Oh, he's lo- loading on more weight. This must be his last set. Yeah, one, two. Take slow motion. Yeah, but, yeah. It's I don't know. I you gotta take in the grain of salt. 
well, you will say um, that sees all, you know, a big run, you're fast, or too slow. Um, be careful, stuff like that. That's how you tear your muscle. Mm-hmm. Um, time it properly. You don't have to. I mean, I didn't count. If you, so like, here's the other thing too is like, you're, you're like, oh, I want to count the seconds or whatever. You get, you count the seconds long enough, you, you can actually not count the seconds anymore. You eventually just be, it'll just be muscle memory. You know, it'll just be, it'll just do it naturally. Same with that resting, right? Like, I use the rest for a minute for so many sets. I can almost just naturally get back into it a minute after I stop. It's just, my, it's like a biology that did it for so long. Um, yeah. So it'll really become more intriguing. It's these habits you gotta build. Um, but also, to kind of leave it back, take older information with a very large pocket of salt because at the time, that's what they knew to be true from what they could tell. But now the science shows the opposite. And over time, the science shows the opposite again. So having that, I'm saying so, what the science is showing now, this is our best guess as to like what the best results are going to be right like the best results is like you know age 12 reps or whatever um two to seven seconds per negative right and um not really training quite to failure if you're bet you know especially if you're on the competing side you don't need to train it quite to failure this is what the size show me now this is our best guess right this is what we tell but, you know, we say five years that let's just say that shows actually this isn't quite right. It's really more like this, right? It might be like yeah. nine to 13 stats. And the pauses are fast from like four to eight seconds. And, you know, all this, right? So it's like, the, this is our best guess right now. So at the time, even if Mike, let's say Mike Renzer was all the truth, that was his best guess as to like his best result for were because of this type of training. How you have gotten better results with different training, I guarantee it. I guarantee it. But for him, his best guess was what he was saying. Um, and the fact that uh, this is their best guess, what was, you know, the best team of like, like the anabolic part. Right? Anabolic's come a long way. So the so training now, I'm very different with the compensation for those anabolics. You know, back like in Day, it was all the ball test. So at the time, they thought that the ball tests were like the best, the best, and that's all there was ever going to be. But there's so many better things now. To our on the test and to theoretically replace the ball, you know, it doesn't work the same way. So you have to take all those things into account too. So like there's a lot of things to like keep in mind when we're talking about um, you know, this older data, this older information, this older science, and a lot of these old our brothers are trained a certain way. And the science shows now that like one of those training, trust in chest and back day, that's too much. You're actually getting diminishing returns because you're training too much muscle in one day. That's what the science has shown. For him, that was his best guess to what his best results were, and he always worked for him because he, his thought process was while well, we were resting, the was working. So I'm, I'm hitting two muscles at the same time. I spend the time wisely. You know, it's, it's, it's what he had the best results. So take all this with a great result. Is there a best guess as of right now? Doesn't mean the science won't change. Well, the science has shown that the information that, you know, for instance, Mike Minzer was, uh, you know, promoting stuff like that is not necessarily true or accurate. So, to the human mind. What Paul's really trying to say is that the I- ideal and most optimized training is don't train at all. Get yourself to the morbid obese side where you're using a scooter to get around town and your rep ranges are going to be French fry to mouth. That is going to be your rep range. So, yeah, curls. that's the, I mean, optimal training. Um, so, just keep that in mind as well. Yeah. Yeah. Putting in your shoes should be should be your exercise for the day. <laughs> that should be that should be the hardest part of your day. Putting on your socks. Whew. One shoe down. Yeah. <laughs> half hour to go. <laughs> Putting on your socks. You have to like throw your socks just to get them on. That should be <laughs> that should be your uh your exercise right there. You're pulling them up. You've got those 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 claw things. Yeah, yeah, like the record thing with the trigger on the Yeah, you just have to put on your socks. Imagine. <laughs> your, your organs are all over the place. And chest is over here. Your lungs are over here. <laughs> Cause they, they have, so, this is what I'm going to talk to you guys about this today. Um, back to some more information stuff now that, like, the Arnold's over. Many of the results were quite big to me. Um, just because the Army K is going on, and that's also... It probably one, won't but... be much different, though. Yeah, I think a lot of the same competitors are in the UK. Um, and a lot of them, you know, like Corey Morris, I think Mike plays better. Um, and 
the army UK that he did in the army US. So we'll see what the results are, but I think they're going to be very similar to last week. I already know West Investors did win um, Classic yep. Secret, you know that. Um, and I think I'm just going to get mental with them. I'm very confident in that as well. So the rest of it's up in the air, but I think it's going to be pretty close. Yeah. What? Cool. All right, guys. All right. Thanks for listening. We'll see you guys later. Peace.